Hi, Dragonflies. Welcome back to Dragonfly Spirit Studio. I'm Lynn Bauer. Over the last several months, I've been releasing some videos on tips for learning to design and plan your own watercolors instead of just copying photos or following along with step-by-step -step tutorials. And kudos to you if you've been watching those and you're working on making that leap. It's a big change for every artist to go from the beginnings where you're just learning technical stuff to figuring out what do I want to say with my paintings and then how do I go about doing it? No one else can give you a roadmap for it. So it can be kind of intimidating, a little bit frustrating, and it's a long process. So it's nice when you're embarked on a big project like that to occasionally take a step back, do something that's just fun and relaxing and has a high probability of success to kind of give yourself a feeling of accomplishment and remind yourself that, no, I haven't forgotten everything I knew. I'm just trying to apply it in a very challenging context. So today's video is a postcard paint along. And you can take this postcard paint along and treat it like just for fun, a project that I want to do and just follow the steps and not have to think very much. Or you can use this as a good framework for exploring some aspect of finding your own creative style and voice. You can play with how you're applying the paint. You can play with color schemes and play with design. So I'll mention those a little bit as we go, but for the most part, this is just something for fun and a little bit of relaxation. So let's get started painting some dragonfly postcards. To keep this super simple, I made a little template for you to draw your dragonfly. You can get this by following the link in the video description or go to my website at dragonflyspiritstudio.com and follow the links to learn and postcard paint alongs and then scroll down until you find the dragonfly postcard paint along. The easiest way to transfer something like this, if your paper is already taped down, is to flip it over and scribble on the back with a pencil. You can use any pencil, but a, a softer drawing pencil will give you a nice dark line to transfer. So this is a 2B. And you're just going to scribble behind wherever the drawing is. That's all you need and then flip it over and position it wherever you want your dragonfly to be on your postcard and trace it. This template actually has a bunch of the veining in the wings indicated and a lot of other detail that would be useful if we were going to do a larger painting, but for a postcard, I recommend you just trace the eyes, the outside of the wing, and maybe the body. I usually just make a dashed line down the center of the body because I use a series of brush marks to indicate the body instead of coloring in an outline. But you can do it either way you want. So I'm going to start by doing the eyes. And um, dragonflies have every color you can imagine, so you can pretty much make them whatever you want. So mix up a few colors. What I suggest you do is have one really dark color and at least one or maybe two lighter colors that you're going to drop in. And I'm going to try to see if I can get a good close-up of this. So let me switch to a close-up view. So what I'm doing here is wetting the inside of the eye, except for one little dot that's going to be the highlight. And you can't see that now, um, but you will as soon as we start putting some color in. And then I'm going to drop my color in right along the edge and let it move with the water into the center part of the eye. Dropping the color in along the edge and letting it move on its own will help us create that illusion of a sphere without having to work so hard about it. I am paying attention to a light source, so my highlight is a little bit to the upper left, and I'll put my darkest color on the lower right. And now we'll just do the other eye pretty much the same way. Thank you. 
Next, I'm going to use a spray bottle to just make a spattering of droplets all over the page. This particular bottle makes much larger droplets than the one I normally use. And the idea here is really just to kind of break up the paper. I want to put down just some random splotches of color, but I don't actually want to see the shape of my brush in the brush marks. So having these droplets of water on the page helps break things up and make the shapes a little bit more organic. And whenever I'm dropping color on the dragonfly wings, I'm making smaller splotches. And outside the dragonfly wings, I'm making bigger splotches, but I'm leaving a little bit of white here and there. When I am trying something new, I like to mingle colors just a little bit, but keep it mostly monochrome so that I don't have to think about color very much while I'm trying to figure out how to suggest a dragonfly's wings. So I'm going to throw in a little bit of this blue-violet just for a bit of variation, but I'm not trying to paint a thing or choose colors that look like something right now. It's enough to worry about to figure out how I'm going to suggest these dragonfly wings without complicating things by asking myself to deal with a whole lot of different colors or make recognizable shapes in the background. And since it doesn't matter much where this color goes, I'm just tapping it, trying to get some of that color to run so I don't have so much liquid sitting on the surface that I have to wait for it to dry. And now we need to let that dry. Okay, that's dry now, so it's time to paint the body. So I'm going to just make a mixture of my blue-violet and my turquoise. And then to make the body, I'll just put the point of my brush right behind the head and press down to make a body section. And then I just keep repeating that shape, pressing a little less to make the sections get smaller and smaller. Now, the top segment of the dragonfly is actually quite a bit wider, but it's underneath the wings, and we want to keep those white so that they can appear reflective. So I'm just going to paint the little section that's just above where the wings are that connects to the head. And I'll leave the rest just the shape of that brush mark. And then we'll paint the little dragonfly's face, a little semicircle that's up there in front of the eyes. While I'm doing that, I want to make a comment about color because every time I do one of these videos, and especially if I use colors besides those five that are in Watercolor Jumpstart, people will write to me and say, that color you're using is exactly the color I've been looking for. Would you please tell me what it is? Or they'll say, would you please list everything on your palette? And I refuse to do that, and here's why. It's not because it's a secret. I don't list what's on my palette because it's always changing. And I don't reply with, here's the colors that, that I use that you love so much because you don't know if what you're seeing on your screen is actually what I'm seeing in my studio. So I use color balance lights, I calibrate my monitor, and I set the white balance on my camera. I do everything I can to make the color as accurate as possible, but I have no control over your monitor or your screen, and you may not either. These days, most of our screens, especially mobile devices, are constantly adjusting the lighting and color to accommodate changes in room light or settings you may have chosen and forgot you turned on. And every screen shows color differently. So it's generally not a good idea to try to use anything you see on a video, mine or anyone else's, as a way to choose colors for your palette. Instead, Take the colors that you already have on your palette and just have fun seeing what they'll do with each other. All right, now that we've painted the body, it's time to add a little twig for our dragonfly to sit on. I like to use a rigger or liner brush to do this. You can use a regular round if you want to, but this makes it easier. So what I'm going to do is mix up a nice dark color and I'm just going to use, again, the colors that were already in my painting. I could mix up a gray or a brown, but I think I would rather have this be just a slightly grayed version of turquoise to match my dragonfly. I want a nice dark color and I'm going to hold my brush at the end vertically up above and try to touch with just the tip. 
and I'm holding it at the end so that I will lose control. I want the brush to wiggle like that because that's a good way to suggest a little twig. And then when I get to the end of the twig, I just flick my wrist. Wherever my twig goes underneath the dragonfly wings, I'm just going to blot a little of that color off while it's still wet to suggest the little bit of reflective quality of the wings. Now I'm going to add a little wing veining, so I'm going to mix some darker color. And you could use your rigger for this, but I'm going to use a dip pen. And you can just load it with your brush and use it to apply your watercolor paint. Now because this is a postcard, even the lines drawn with the dip pen are a little bit too large, too dark. So I'm going to now bring out my water brush and just soften those lines on one side. Of course, you could just use your regular brush and keep a container of clean water on your work table. I'm just terrible about rinsing my brush in any container of liquid that's within arm's reach. <laughs> so I'm not very good at keeping clean water on my table and the water brush solves that problem for me with softening edges. Now I can have a look at my template to get some ideas about where I might want to put some more veins in the dragonfly's wings, but you don't have to be terribly precise about this. Different types of dragonflies and even different individuals have a little variation. We don't see all the veins depending on what angle we're looking at, so just kind of use the template as a general guide and put some veining in here and there. The largest and most noticeable veins in a dragonfly's wings are those ones on the leading edge, so I soften the other ones more and I don't draw the whole vein, I let it be broken up a little bit. Another thing you can do to suggest those larger areas in the dragonfly's wings is take a wet brush, make a brush mark with the wet brush, and then, oops, not wet enough, <laughs> let's try that again. So I'm trying to leave a little oval or brush mark shape of water that's similar to those rounded shapes in the wings. And then I'm going to drop some color in. These wing sections are actually three-dimensional, raised and lowered, so there's a little bit of shadowing along the veins. So making a wet area where a section of the wing would be, dropping a little color along the edge to create a shadow just along the edge, that's another way to suggest kind of the form of a dragonfly's wings. And if you do what I did here and you drop in more color than you intended, you can always drink it up. This is a very wet area, so drink it back up with your brush or blot here and there. And that's a good way to give the sort of random variations in light and dark that you see in the dragonfly's wings. You can also make little dots for the individual cells in the wings. I would suggest you do a little bit of that. If you do too much, then you kind of commit yourself to doing the whole wing, and I don't know about you, but I don't have the patience for that. So there we go, quick and easy dragonfly postcard to pop in the mail. This postcard is fast and simple enough that you can use it as a good place to try out different color combinations or experiment with different techniques. So for those of you who are really gung-ho, let's do another one, and this time we're going to use freezer paper to make the dragonfly wings. Freezer paper has a shiny side and a non-shiny side, so we're going to put it down with the non-shiny side up because the non-shiny side, the non-coated side, will take a pencil line so we can transfer our dragonfly design to the freezer paper. And we just need the wings. So I'll trace the wings onto my freezer paper. And then I'll take some scissors and cut them out. So now I have my little wings and I'm going to take my drawing and this time I only need to transfer the eyes and that center line for the body because my freezer paper is going to do the wings for me.
And this time I decided to use some pinks and reds. So I mix up some color and now I am putting it on the shiny side. And you see it's the coated side because it beads up. And that's the whole idea. We want it to bead up so that when we put it on the paper, we'll get just sort of some random splotches. So I'm just experimenting with this technique. And since this dragonfly postcard is pretty simple, it's a good place to experiment. So I've got some paint on there. I'm gonna line it up with my head and body and smoosh it down and see what happens. Now I can kind of see through the freezer paper that those splotches don't really define the edges of the wings very well. So I'm going to actually keep my freezer paper stuck on the page for a little bit. And I think I will just change this color a little bit from the color I'm using for my dragonfly. And then what I'm going to do is use this as a way to kind of define my dragonfly by adding water wherever the freezer paper isn't. And of course, this isn't perfect. <laughs> and my freezer paper is starting to curl up on me, but it is showing most of the edge of the wing. It's working as a form of masking. And if some of this water creeps underneath, that's probably okay because we wanted little splotches. So now let's add some color to all that water and see if that worked. So I'm basically, instead of painting around my dragonfly myself, I used the freezer paper as sort of a mask, and now I'm letting the water move the paint up to the edge of the wings, so the wings will get defined by the fact that that paper is still dry and the paint only moves where the water was. And I'm just kind of playing around here with the colors in the background. Would this be more interesting painting if there was a setting for this dragonfly? I put some grasses in the background or something like that. Maybe so, but when I'm playing with technique, I don't want to give myself too many things to think about. So I'm just going to let that background be sort of abstract. And the only thing I'm preserving right now are the wings. I can paint right over the body because I'll make the body a lot darker than the background. It's starting to dry over here, so I do have to paint around the wings a little bit, but I can sort of see where it was wet. So that works almost as well as having a pencil line. And it doesn't have to be perfect. So now I've pretty much got everything except for the dragonfly wings wet. And as long as the surface is completely wet, I can play with dropping in color. And in fact, let's play with making blooms and making weird wet in wet effects. And that will suggest some out of focus something in the background. So all I have to do is make sure I don't paint over the wings and I can kind of do whatever I want in the background. Okay, so now I need to let that dry and then we can come back and add the rest of our dragonfly. I'm going to do the eyes and the body exactly the same way I did them before. My eyes are over a colored background, so I won't have as light a highlight as I had before. In this case, the eyes might not be as prominent. The wings will be more of the subject of the painting, and that's okay. These steps are pretty much the same as the previous dragonfly, so I'm going to speed things up a little bit here and edit out some of these details. But that's a good reminder to me to remind you that you should not use the length of the video as a guide to how long it should take to do the project. Remember, I'm editing out the drying time and I'm also editing out going to get fresh water or searching for the brush I need or just pausing to think for a moment about what I'm doing or waiting for a smaller area to dry. In general, these projects take between two and three times the length of the video once I actually know what I'm doing. If this were new to me, it might even take longer than that. So don't use the video length as a guideline because it will force you to rush way too much. As I'm working on the veining on this one, I just want to mention too that 
If you don't happen to have a dip pen or a rigger or a small brush, you can do what I'm doing here and just use your regular brush. This is my usual number 12 travel brush that I use for everything. So having those other tools might make it a little bit easier, but it's definitely a project that you can do just with whatever brush you normally use. I am going to use my rigger though for my little twig because I really just love the way this wobbly line is possible when I'm working with this little bitty brush holding it at the very end. But you could certainly paint a twig with your regular brush too. And as before, I'm going to blot out the part that goes behind just a little bit so it's just a little bit lighter. So there we have it, two Dragonfly postcards ready to pop in the mail. And a great subject for practicing and experimenting with different types of brushes, different ways to apply the paint, different color schemes and interpretations. So take it, push it farther, change it more, make it your own, and have fun with it. See you next time. Happy painting!